Hey, Jason here from Theme Punch, and welcome to another edition of Top 10 Things You May or May Not Know About Slider Evolution. So to get started, I'm just going to create a new slider, and then we're going to go ahead and add some slides to it. So to do that really fast, I'm going to choose Add Slide, Add Bulk Slides, and then I can just click Shift, and then Select. And you can see all these five images are selected, and that's going to create five new slides. And I can just delete this first one, and now we just have five slides with the images I chose. So the first thing I'm going to show you is if we head back to the slider settings, and we just click Preview. Setting up a slider with five slides like we just did, we can see there's no navigation yet. But if we scroll down to these slider type presets, and I click here. All of these different slider type presets that are available will basically add navigation arrows, bullets, possibly a progress bar, depending on which one that we choose. So you have presets for your standard slider type, for your hero scene type, and then also there's a lot of great presets for the carousel slider type. I would highly recommend choosing one of these if you're going to create a carousel slider. But for today, let's just go ahead and select Slideshow Auto. And by selecting that, it just sort of loads a set of settings here for our slider. So if I save that and then preview, now we can see I have navigation arrows and bullets. So this is just a great way of getting set up really quickly with some default navigation. Uh, these slider presets will also activate these custom layer grid sizes for your mobile devices. And we can even set up our own slider presets, which is what I want to show you here. If we head down to load a preset from this slider type, let's just make a few changes. So if we head up to navigation, under arrows, we could change this from always show to yes, which means it'll just show up without a mouse hover. We can do the same thing for the bullets. And then maybe we change the slider layout from auto to full width. So once I do that, I'm going to click this plus icon here, save current settings as preset, name it my slider settings. And I can choose a thumbnail for that. I'll choose this tiger here. And now I have my own slider preset. So anytime I want to create a new slider, I can have a custom set of settings already ready to go, which is going to save me a lot of time if I'm creating new sliders regularly. Okay, so let's head over to the slide editor, and I'm going to show you some cool things that we can do with layers. So let's add a layer here, and maybe set the text to slider caption with a font size of 96, line height of 96, an X and Y offset of 50, Let's set a slide based align under the behavior tab here. And then let's also apply a Google font. So how about maybe lobster here. So one of the things that you may have noticed with a lot of the recent templates coming out is these really cool blending effects between layers and backgrounds. So let's go ahead and apply one of those to this layer here. So right up under Advanced Style, if I head down to the Filters tab here, this Blend Mode option is right here. And let's apply an Overlay Blend Mode. And now let's save this slide and preview it, and we can see what kind of effect this has. So you can see it kind of bleeds into the background and just creates this really cool visual and so that's the blend mode effect and you can experiment with a lot of the other filters here so as you begin to use slider revolution you'll notice there's a lot of really awesome features just built in everywhere and one of the things that you can do as far as moving your layers around the stage is not only can you adjust the x and the y here the align options up here and of course you can move it around with your mouse but if you click shift and then one of the arrows, you can also move the layer five pixels at a time, up, down, left, and right. 
and if you just use the arrows without the shift key it'll move one pixel so this is just kind of cool if you need a lot of precision in terms of maybe you need to move this layer one pixel and instead of going up here and having to adjust the input field every time moving it one pixel is super easy just click the right arrow key and there you go so the next trick I want to show you is you may have experimented with letter or word based animations for layers so if we head over to the animation tab right over here split animation we have char based which is per letter word based or even line based so of course we can select that option and then start playing with different animation options which would be right under here but another thing that we can do is we can select any of the pre-built animations from this list here so for example let's choose short from right and then we can transform that pre-built animation into a letter based or word based animation super easy and you can do that for any of the pre-built animations so for example if I just scroll down maybe I choose bounce in and then set this from no split to char based look at that really cool animation that we just created just by combining one of the animation presets with the char based split animation text so so far we've set up a slider with five slides and as you begin to work with layers one of the questions will be do you want that layer to disappear before the slide changes to the next or when the slide changes to the next or maybe you have a hero scene slider which is basically a one slide slider and you want that content to always be visible and never disappear so that factors into what I'm about to show you as well so let's head over to the slider settings and I'm just going to activate the progress bar here just so we can get a good representation of the sliders timeline which currently is set to nine seconds so I'm just going to set this to white, bump up the opacity, save the settings here. And if we preview this, that white bar at the top is our slider's progress. And after nine seconds, the slide will change and you can see our caption there will disappear. So if we wanted that caption to disappear before the slide changes, maybe four or five seconds, maybe we were creating some kind of cool layer sequence where we have different words show and disappear if we head back to the slide editor and we scroll down to the slides timeline here we can go ahead and drag the right side maybe over to five seconds and let's save that and now let's head back over to slider settings and now this layer should disappear right around midway through the sliders normal progress here we go so if we want to revert that change so for example let's say that a layer is disappearing and you don't want it to disappear if you head back to the slide settings you can click this little clock icon so it's an arrow and this will automatically snap the layer to the end of the timeline and it won't disappear until the slide changes or if you have just a single slide slider this layer will never disappear the next thing I want to show you is layer stacking which is really CSS Z indexing so if we were to apply an action to this layer maybe just a simple link and have it open in a new window tag link we were to preview this we could see that this link is clickable and my Boston Celtics lost tonight <laughs> okay so if we add another layer maybe a shape and let's say we set that to full width full height and then align it left top with a behavior of slide based 
and maybe we just want to sort of add some darkness to the right side of our image here. We could head over to background for this shape, over to gradient, and we could play with the gradient a little bit. Set these to black. And then the opacity here to zero. We could add another opacity stop of zero, 50%. And then how about we mess with the angle a little bit and we put it toward the top right corner. Cool. So we have some shading here now with this shape layer that we applied with that gradient. But this layer actually spans the entire width and height of the slide. And if we were to test this now, the hyperlink that we added to the slider caption text there should not be clickable because we have a z-index conflict right now. So to fix that, if you scroll down to the layers timeline again, what we can do is we can move these layers on top of one another. So right now the shape is at the bottom and that means it has the highest Z index. So if we just move it to the top of the list here, that's all that should be needed. And if we save the slide and preview it, I can click this caption again and I can be reminded that the Celtics lost again. <laughs> so the next thing I'd like to show you is how you could apply custom CSS to the layer if you wanted. So with the layer selected, if you head up to the Advanced Style option, head over to Advanced CSS, and click this Layer button, we could apply an inline style, maybe a text shadow. So how about we write that as 10 pixels RGBA, 35 transparency. And now we can see our text has a nice little pop to it. So another option for this is we could apply this CSS to the slider itself and then assign it to this layer through a simple class name. So let's just delete what we just added and then let's assign a class name to this layer. Maybe my text layer. And just save that real quick. And if we scroll up to the top, this button right here, slider CSS JS, is how we could apply either custom CSS or custom JavaScript to the entire slider. So I'm just going to type in that class name, which was my text layer and now we paste in the text shadow save it and now if we preview this slide we can see our text shadow is applied so next let's go ahead and add some hover styles to this layer so inside the advanced style section if we head over to hover we just turn this on right here this will apply a mouse hover and you can see it changes immediately but if we change the time here to 300 milliseconds now we have a nice smooth transition but we obviously don't want this transitioning to black so let's go ahead and copy over the original styles to the hover styles and then we can make some adjustments so to do that, let's head over to the Hover tab on the right side here. You can see these are our idle styles, these are our hover styles. And then let's choose Copy and then Copy from Idle. And what this will do is it'll copy over the same styles we had applied originally to the layer. And so now if I mouse over the layer, nothing should change because both the idle state and the hover state have the same styles. But this sort of just gives us a fresh slate to start with and we can make some minor adjustments now. So let's go ahead and add a background 
hover to this layer. So I'm going to start by switching back over to idle and inside the background let's apply a black color with zero opacity and then inside spaces let's give this a 20 30 padding and what this will do is it'll allow us a little bit of extra space here once we apply that background color so let's head over to the hover tab now and head into background select black but for the opacity let's give it maybe 50 percent and now let's save the slide and let's test this mouse hover cool so we have a nice little mouse hover and of course you could apply any styles you want and the last thing I'd like to show you with layers is similar to how we set up presets for the slider settings at the beginning we can also do the same thing for layer styles so with the layer selected if I go ahead and click this save icon here choose save as you can say my layer style and then when I create a new layer let's center it on the stage so we can see it here if I wanted to apply the same style to this new layer all I'd have to do is head up to this drop down and then scroll to my layer style select that and then all of a sudden the same styles are applied to our new layer so the last thing I'd like to show you is an optimization tip that's over in the global settings so with this include rev slider libraries globally option basically with this set to on the slider scripts will load on every single page whether there's a slider present or not so this isn't really the best option especially if maybe we only have a slider on our home page so what we could do is we could set this to off and then only pages where a slider revolution shortcode existed would load the slider scripts so for example if we head over to pages here and we were to add a shortcode to this page because a shortcode exists here on this page the slider scripts will load for this page even though this setting is set to off now let's say that a slider revolution was packaged with your theme or maybe your theme has a special option for sliders and slider revolution is one of the choices well in that case maybe the slider isn't being added to the page as a short code and maybe it's an option as one of the template options inside the page here so what you could do in that case is head over to the global settings and for this option here pages to include rev slider libraries we could type in the ID of the page that we want to load the slider scripts on so for this page here if we just head back to our list of pages and hover our mouse over the edit right toward the bottom left you can see that the ID of this page is 934 so then if we head back to global settings I could type in 934 and then the slider scripts will only load for this page and if I had a slider on additional pages I could go ahead and add a comma and then add another pages ID maybe 75 so that wraps up this edition of top 10 things that you may or may have not known about slider revolution I hope that you picked up some tips and thanks for watching